Um, for my folio project, I had Shades of Grey by Jasper Ford, and I titled this You Are What You Can See because your society is based on perception, and that's also like a quote from the book also. But something you should know about this book is that it's a dystopian novel, and their society is based on color perception, so like what color you see and how much you see of it determines what you do in society and like how far you are how far up in the ranks you are. And the main character is named Eddie Russett, and he was sent to a city called East Carmine for humility realignment. And along the process, he meets a gray, and that's unusual because in the society, they kind of look down upon the grays. And so it was just kind of like an unusual relationship, but he ends up falling in love with her, and she's very, like, Compared to everybody else, she's very open-minded and thinks for herself and creates her own thoughts and opinions. And so when he starts talking to her and like hanging out with her, it starts to change his perception on society. And so ultimately, it's a story about someone breaking away from the norm of society and that it's about that one person who's brave enough to take action and is willing to, I guess, get in trouble for doing what he thinks is right. And so I kind of related this to Child 44, where Leo wants to like stop all this unfairness. And in the process of um, like going away from what the rest of society thinks, the authorities start to notice them. So at the end of this book, the very highest person at National Color, which is like the highest place you can be in, hires him at the end to work for him just so he can keep an eye on him and make sure he doesn't start, I guess, reading like a revolution, but that's in the second book. And so, in like examples of how he defies society, um, he, he doesn't do it on purpose, he just thinks in like, oh, this is the right thing to do, let me do it, and that's how he sees it as, but to the authorities, they're like, what is he doing? And so, in the book, he risked his life to save his friend, which is a yellow, and in their society, that's their belief, the red, which what is what he is. And he doesn't do it just to like defy them. He's trying to save them because they have a curfew, and when that happens, it's like all darkness, and they're kind of scared of the darkness because it's a lack of color. But he just wanted to do the right thing, and then he also becomes close to Jane. and. That relationship is frowned upon because like normal color people and grays aren't really supposed to mix but he wants to keep talking to her because she tells him that the grays are mistreated and he wants to help them but it, it's important to understand this concept because if you're ever in a situation where there's like a lack of individualism um, you need to be that person who's willing to try or at least question like why are we doing all this stuff and um, you also realize that if you really think about it, they're all the exact. They're all exactly the same. The grays only see gray, and then the violets only see violet. So they only really see one color. So they're really not that different from everybody else. And that kind of reflects our society today, that we kind of discriminate against each other, whether it's like religion, race, or any <coughs> other type of beliefs. But in the end, we're all still human beings, and we're really not that much different. From and if I were to make this part of an AP English class, I would focus like on the characters and their impact of in their society. And since it's a dystopian novel, I'd also kind of bring back Child 44, 1984, and Clockwork Orange. Um, and like their similarities and differences. And I'd, oops, I'd also discuss like when we were talking about the V for Vendetta, how much is the government actually really controlling us without us like really thinking about it and kind of just think for ourselves. And what I would want the students to gain from it is to, to think for themselves and don't just make assumptions based on what people are saying, but make assumptions on the research you have done and everything you've looked into. And so I was reading an interview from Jasper Ford, and I found this quote, and I thought it was interesting. 
And he says the most remarkable thing about color is that it doesn't exist. It is a property of the mind and the mind alone. When you perceive orange, your mind is simply interpreting light as that is vibrating at a specific frequency. An orange isn't orange at all. Color has no color in the real world. An illusion in order to help us make a better sense of the world. And so I think it means that the ideal perception should be individualistic and not dictated by society. And this kind of reminded me of like discussion we had before at Grendel was like, what makes a chair a chair? It's basically what the majority of society says it is. So they make all these rules based on what the people said it was, but what really means it like that we have to do that. So you kind of just need to think for yourself and see like what you see everything as. But yeah.